perhaps 11, 1200 BC. The Jewish people have not yet become a nation. They are a people. And they are being ruled, if that is the term, by their religion. They have a high priest who represents the greatness and the justice of God for them, to whom they go with their problems and who leads and directs them in the will of God. And Samuel has become an old man, and the rule is not as good as it used to be. The word of God does not come through as clearly as it once did. And the people are growing and their life is becoming complicated. And Samuel has two sons who aren't quite up to him. And there's corruption. And there's perversion. And there's injustice. And so the people gather themselves together through their leaders, and they come to talk to Samuel. And this is the first amazing thing in this scripture to me, that in an Oriental people in a barbaric time, there would be enough understanding, appreciation for the leaders to go to their high priest and to say to him, we are dissatisfied with our rule. And this is what they were able to do. And this is what they did. And instead of losing their heads, Samuel said, let me think about your proposition. For they asked him for a king that they might be like all the other peoples and so that they might overcome the corruption that had come through the gen degeneration of his own sons. And when Samuel said, let me have time to think about it, he meant, uh, I have to subject this proposition of yours to the eternal goodness of God. I do not know yet whether it's a good one. And so he took it to God in prayer. And he was hurt and distressed and felt himself a failure. But he didn't take out his distress on his people. It was his own spiritual problem and he kept it where it belonged. Lo and behold, when he takes the proposition to God, he finds that the Lord supports his people. If you ever wanted a motto for a democracy, would you ever find a better one than hearken unto the voice of the people? And God said to Samuel, you must listen to the people. Now I tell you what you do. You tell them all the things that will come through having a king. And you make it very strong to them that they are seeking in the wrong direction. And Samuel went back and he told the leaders what a king would be like, for they had not had one and didn't know. How the king would oppress them and raise great armies and take their young people and make them slaves to run before his chariots and how he would appropriate their vineyards and their olive yards, and how he would take their young daughters and use them as servants and for his own gratification. And when Samuel got through telling the people all the terrible things that would come from having a king, they said, nevertheless, we still want a king. And the Lord said again to Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people. And Samuel sent the leaders away while he could think further on it, and he proceeded to make them a king. 
2,500 years approximately before democracy came to be, these Jewish people were exercising it. For democracy rests on the simple proposition that the people should be heard and that the people should have a voice in their destiny. And so Samuel listened in a time when democracy was utterly unheard of, when kings and rulers exercised extreme arbitrary power when hundreds and thousands could be slaughtered for minor offenses against a king's judgment. And yet here were an oriental people who somehow or other had the courage to be able to ask for a king and to tell the chief priest and the great leader that they didn't want him or his sons anymore. Hearken unto the voice of the people. 1,000 to 1,100 years before Jesus. And when would you say that democracy came to be? You wouldn't count it earlier than 1,500 in our era. And we still do not have it. This is the wisdom and the magnitude of this Bible of ours, that in an inconspicuous chapter, in a book telling about times so long ago, there could be such a piece of eternal wisdom and such a glance of eternal and immortal light. Not only is democracy laid down here as an ideal, but the basis for it is made very clear. And the first basis is the sovereignty of God. It is only recently that we have put into our Pledge of Allegiance, and I don't believe that I like it, under God. But the truth is still pertinent that democracies are always under God. There must be a sovereign guiding power above the power of individual men. Otherwise, the voice of man becomes arbitrary, and a man begins to assume to himself the power to do what he wants to do. For if he is the strongest or the wisest, he assumes that he speaks for God. And whatever he decides becomes uh, the will of the people, for they are subjected to it. And the only way that we can avoid the ingrown and destructive and corrosive quality of pride and arrogance is to have some higher court of reference, some reference that is above ourself, however great and noble and strong we may be, some point of reference that's far above the people, some point of reference that's above competing philosophies,